Hello and welcome to another video in the lecture series entitled Advanced Biomaterials. So in today's lecture we will look at a very important aspect of tissue engineering, a very important construct which is used in tissue engineering which is known as scaffold. So we will talk about the different scaffolds or the properties and the functions and characteristics of scaffolds which are used in tissue engineering approaches. So, these scaffolds represent an important component in tissue engineering. So, these cells, scaffolds and growth stimulating signals, these are considered as the trier in tissue engineering approaches. So, what is a scaffold? A scaffold is basically a 3D material which is used to provide structural support for cells attachment and subsequent tissue development. So, a 3D material made up of, uh, it can be made up of a polymeric biomaterials which can be used as a supporting framework or a supporting material to provide structural support to the cells for cellular and tissue development and differentiation. So, functions of the scaffold. So, what are the main functions of the scaffold? So, most cells in our body are anchorage dependent. So, the cells need a specific substrate of or a substrate to grow and attach to it. So, once they are attaching to the substrate, they uh, through different molecular uh, interactions, they are they get spreaded and assume a specific morphology and these types of cells are known as adherent cells or and these cells usually grow in a monolayer. But in in vivo conditions, these scaffolds enable these cells to, since these scaffolds are porous structures, these scaffolds enable the cells to migrate through their pores and therefore allow a three-dimensional uh, structure or a space for the growth of the cells. Now, when cells are growing in a three-dimensional space rather than in a monolayer, then these cells start uh, behaving together like a tissue. So, these cells starts assuming or uh, getting a tissue like morphology and also assuming their specific functions such as secretion, signaling and many other associated functions which are which are usually found in tissues. So cells will start assuming those functions once they are allowed to grow in a three dimensional space. So uh, the basic role of a scaffold, why a scaffold is used so that it can mimic the uh, physiology and the function of extracellular matrix where different types of cells, uh, adherent cells, grow in a uh, in uh, grow in in vivo conditions. So, so most of these cells which are anchorage dependent and they reside in this uh, solid network or solid meshwork of uh, proteins which is known as the extracellular matrix. So the function of a scaffold is to mimic the conditions of extracellular matrix and thereby promote uh, thereby provide a three dimensional growth space for the cells to grow and assume tissue like function. So, if we uh, point out the different functions of a scaffold, so what we are essentially looking at uh, include, so the first function or the first important function of a scaffold is that it provides a structural framework or structural support. Support for exogenously applied cells to attach, grow, migrate and differentiate in vitro and in vitro. So it provides a structural support for favoring cellular growth, differentiation and migration both in vitro and in vitro. The second important function would be to contribute to the mechanical properties. That is, scaffolds will mimic the, ex the mechanical properties of the tissue in which it is uh, it is being applied to or the tissue which it is actually trying to mimic. So the mechanical properties of the tissues uh, it will be uh, trying to be similar to it and it will provide shape 
and mechanical stability to the tissue defect where it is trying to be used for and also give rigidity and stiffness to the engineered tissue. So this is the second point would be to uh, mimic the mechanical properties of the tissue which is uh, tissue system which it is being uh, used for repair or replacement. For pro repair or replacement. The third function would be to interact with the cells actively. So to actively interact with the cells and to facilitate activities such as proliferation and differentiation which are very important characteristics of tissues. So to promote cellular proliferation and differentiation. The fourth function of scaffolds would be to that uh, scaffolds might be used as delivery vehicles on and reservoirs for externally applied growth stimulating factors. So these scaffolds might be prepared or might be added with growth stimulating factors, hormones or signaling molecules to enable these tissue differentiation, growth, development and proliferation and related dynamic behaviors of cells in tissues. So it will be uh, acting as delivery uh, uh, or as uh, delivery vehicles. which are externally applied. Finally, another uh, important function of scaffolds might be that it will provide a void volume for enabling vascularization and new tissue formation during the process of tissue remodeling. So, some of the dynamic behaviors of tissues are influenced by these scaffold materials once they can be uh, fabricated with externally applied growth factors, hormones, etc. to mimic the dynamic behaviors of tissues. So, it would be to promote vascularization new tissue formation during remodeling phase. So these were the some of the important functions of the scaffold. So structural supports, mechanical frameworks, stability, delivery agents and promoting different uh, dynamic behaviors of cells which make up the tissues include or summarize some of the more important functions of scaffolds and why they are used in tissue engineering. So now we will look at some features or characteristics of such scaffolds. So let me erase out some of this part. now at some features or characteristics of scaffolds.
so one of the very important characteristics of scaffolds will be their structure their structure will be a highly porous structure so porosity is a very important essential uh, feature of scaffolds so porosity represents the percentage or the total amount of pores which are present in a given material so why is why are pores important in scaffolds so as i mentioned before that scaffolds uh, mimic a three dimensional growth growth space or growth environment for cells for uh, stimulating the or for mimicking the tissue like behavior or tissue like morphology of the cells so that is why this porosity or the pore porous structure in the scaffold is very essential because to promote cellular migration and attachment inside the pores so that the cells can grow in a three dimensional growth space or a growth environment so that is why porosity is the measure of the total amount of pores in a given material or a given volume of a material so it can be measured in different ways so the scaffolds will have a porous structure and also the pores will be interconnected so interconnectivity is an in, uh, is also an essential criteria in porosity and these pores will be interconnected in order to uh, in order to uh, stimulate or mimic the cross talking between the cells or interaction between the cells which will be growing inside the uh, the pores inside the scaffold so material exchange uh, signaling all these uh, activities will be uh, will be mimicked or will be uh, facilitated by the interconnectivity between the different pores of these scaffolds and also uh, based on this uh, particular applications these porosity can be controlled through different ways right? through the different fabrication techniques of these scaffolds which we will be discussing subsequently the porosity can be altered or can be controlled so a second feature of scaffolds would be based on the type of application we are trying to develop for fabricating a specific type of a scaffold these scaffolds should have a specific degradation rate most of these scaffolds are used in vivo systems for promoting wound repair such as uh, i have given an example previously that is for a third degree burn we can create a scaffold to promote skin repair or uh, or a scaffold to act as a skin regeneration template for treating patients with third degree burns so in such cases if we are implanting the scaffold with uh, fibroblast cells inside a patient's skin so that scaffold slowly needs to be degraded so that uh, it can be replaced by normal skin like tissue in the patient so that is why a properly tuned or a properly controlled degradation rate is an essential condition consideration for while fabricating any type of a given scaffold uh, based material a third uh, feature of this uh, scaffold could be that uh, these scaffolds can be fabricated with biomaterials so that these biomaterials will have the sufficient mechanical properties or uh, desirable uh, uh, desirable functions so that uh, it can be actually used to mimic the type of tissue which we are trying to fabricate it for so it should have the same or similar mechanical properties for the tissue in which it is uh, desired to be used or where its application will lie so the fourth characteristic would be biological cues such as cell adhesion sites physical cues such as surface topography should be present so as we just mentioned earlier that these scaffolds might be uh, used as uh, used for adding a uh, different uh, growth factors or different hormones or different molecules to promote of the cellular growth migration and differentiation 
thereby to mimic the different dynamic states of a tissue. So these scaffolds can be uh, added with or can be provided with different biological cues. to promote cellular growth or proliferation, migration and differentiation. Right? The fifth feature of scaffolds would be that every scaffold should have a basic microstructure. To promote the specific type of cells growth and proliferation which it is intended to. So eukaryotic cells can have a size range from 5 to maybe 20 or maybe 50 also micrometer. So, Based on the type of cells uh, which we are trying to fabricate, which we are trying to uh, 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 mimic using or the tissue type which we are trying to mimic using a specific scaffold. So those pores should be in the range for, to allow those particular cells to migrate, grow, proliferate and differentiate. So if we are trying to make a skin regeneration template, we should uh, enable, we should uh, fabricate the scaffolds with pore sizes to enable the fibri uh, to, to enable the migration of fibroblasts. Right? So every scaffold should have a specific microstructure for its specific application. Finally, uh, also one the most actually arguably the most important characteristic that any scaffold should have is that it should have acceptable tissue compatibility. Or biocompatibility. That is why uh, since we are trying to make a system which we will be using directly with in vivo or with a living system and with which will be in contact with living cells and tissues. So that material should has to be uh, biocompatible and it should not show any adverse cytotoxicity or tissue toxicity. So these were some of the most important or some of the most common or uh, most useful uh, features or characteristics of scaffolds. So with this, uh, broadly these scaffolds are fabricated to mimic the extracellular matrix of the target tissue in its native state. So all these factors or all these features will be directed towards mimicking the tissue type which are in, uh, which are scaffold will be intended to be uh, to mimic or to uh, mimic that particular uh, mimic or uh, you know to replace that particular type of tissue which we which is which is injured or which is uh, which is necrosized or which is which we are trying to replace so with this we will uh, end today's video so hope we we have learned we we have learned about some of the interesting features about scaffolds what are scaffolds why they are important in tissue engineering how they are actually fabricated and what are the essential considerations which one needs to keep in mind while fabricating such some uh, sub scaffolds for specific applications so in subsequent lectures, we'll be looking at different scaffold fabrication techniques and what are the essential considerations while fabricating scaffolds for a specific particular applications in specific tissue engineering problems or specific uh, therapeutic regimes. So with this, we'll end today's lecture. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Thank you.